When a bird poops on you, you usually don't see it as a business opportunity. However, replace your shoulder with an island, and a bird with a whole lot of birds, and you get one of the 1800's most lucrative industries, guano. If you've been watching this channel, you'll know by now that animal poop can sometimes be more valuable than just animal poop. In the case of guano, however, it was valuable enough to shape borders. To begin, guano is, well, poop. There are two kinds of guano, seabird guano and bat guano. We'll be looking at the bird kind in this video. Guano is valuable because it contains nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium, which all help promote plant growth, making guano an excellent fertilizer. While the indigenous Andean people have been collecting guano from small islands off the coast of modern day Peru for thousands of years, the guano industry in Europe didn't take off until the 1800s. This started with Prussian Alexander von Humboldt going to Peru and noting its use in 1802. This was followed by a Cornish chemist, Humphrey Davy, writing a book on it in 1813. This book became a massive hit and was translated into various languages sparking huge European interest in these guano-covered islands. When the whaling industry made its way to South America, they needed an additional resource to fill their ships in order to make these trips worthwhile. This led them to guano, which led to Europeans taking claims. In 1840, Peru abolished all foreign claims to their guano and nationalized it, making all guano on Peruvian islands property of Peru itself. This led to guano becoming Peru's largest source of revenue. Due to nationalization, foreign powers began seeking other sources, which resulted in the U.S. passing the 1856 Guano Island Act, where if a U.S. citizen finds an unclaimed island covered in guano, they can claim it for the U.S. Over a hundred islands were claimed this way. Interesting enough, this act is still law to this day. Back to Peru, however, where by the 1860s, their most productive guano site, the Chincha Islands, were nearly depleted. Peru shifted operations to other islands, but it was clear that this industry that essentially built the Peruvian economy was reaching its end. While Peruvians naturally worried about this, their worries would be alleviated by the discovery of sodium nitrate, also called Chilean saltpeter. This relief wouldn't last long, however, because in 1879, the War of the Pacific started, which saw Chile invade Bolivia in order to claim its guano and saltpeter. Bolivia and Peru had a defense pact, which meant Peru got dragged into the conflict, leading to Chile striking Peru as well. The war ended in 1884, resulting in nearly 3,000 deaths, with Chile gaining all of Peru's guano islands and the entirety of Bolivia's coastline. The use of bird guano declined in the early 1900s with the production of synthetic fertilizers taking off. The guano golden age was over, but it left behind thousands of deaths, changed borders, and damaged ecosystems, which is crazy to think about when you remember that guano is just a pile of poop. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, take care.